All right then, lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. To be very honest, I've woken up very late and we are massively, massively late for this video. I don't even know the day, you know, which day it is. Is it Friday? Is it Saturday? I'm second guessing. But anyway, let's get to the content because really, I'm really, really late. And I'm really, really sorry. In this video, Arsenal are getting closer and closer up to a Nicolas Pepe, uh, you know, a Nicolas Pepe exit that is being shown by the links of wingers that we are being linked with. We shall discuss that and more, uh, uh, more about that. Nicola Pepe leaving Arsenal, uh, you know, very, very close. Bits are, st you know, have started to fly in uh, from the likes of Newcastle that they want him probably in January, probably in the summer. We'll see what happens with Nicola Pepe. I'm going to try to dive into that. Lacazette to Manchester City. That is the most crazy transfer I would ever hear of uh, in the January transfer window. But like I said, linked with Manchester City. We know that Manchester City need a striker. And I'm going to tell you what is happening around there. Aubameyang and, uh, and a couple of other players that played um, already uh, in the international break. Aubameyang scored. Smith Rowe you know, has got his debut uh, for England. We'll talk about that as well. Salah, Mane, the, you know, are they picking up injuries ahead of Arsenal? Look, Liverpool, they could be in more trouble than they find themselves in at the moment. Thomas Partey's injury is becoming a little bit elongated, it's becoming a little bit aggravated, and it's becoming a little bit, it's, you know, a, a little bit of a scare. At the moment, actually, it's being, uh, it's being proposed that he might not fly uh, with Ghana, and is now a, you know, a, a possible, slightly a possible doubt for the Liverpool game. Now, without Mane, without Salah, Liverpool are very, very strong. They are very, very deadly. We need Thomas Partey in that team. Arsenal have been linked with yet another striker. The name is not new. Victor Osimhen linked with Arsenal in last summer, but one, if you still remember, when we wanted to bring in a striker and we didn't. Victor Osimhen is the man. Napoli striker. He was bought for a hell lot of money. So if Arsenal are going to do that deal, we need to prepare our own very, very big salary and very big transfer fee but obviously yes us now also thinking about a swap deal between us and Dusan, um between Dusan Vlahovic uh and uh and and, and, and Fiorentina they're looking at uh Vlahovic moving this side and Lucas Torreira moving on the other end so maybe maybe yes maybe that is an incentive maybe it's not an incentive Fiorentina want to sell in January they have accepted that I don't have accepted that in case the right offer actually comes in. We are sponsored by the beautiful people at H&A &A Scammers. Make sure you do check them out. I'll leave all their information um, in the description. But make sure you do check them out. Because with all the latest in terms of gaming, updated games, very fast games, the enjoyment, enjoyment, entertainment, um, you know, in, in the virtual world, they've got you covered. FIFA 21, FIFA 22, GTA. All those games, Motor Combat, you know, Need for Speed, which is my favorite, actually, they will get you covered. Let's get to the stories, guys, because, look, like I said, a little bit, no, a little bit late, but better late than sorry. Let us start off with um, Emil Smith. Boy, got his debut already uh, for England. Of course, we said it. It's going to come. Mikel said it. Uh, when the right time comes, Emil will get his, um, you know, Will's debut. Now, he didn't score on his debut. And um, I really doubt he, had, he you know, had a very, very, you know, big impact uh, in that game. But, of course, debuts are debuts. Smith, uh, Smith Rowe has finally gone into the books of England as one of those players that have ever played for the national team. Now, of course, England were playing yesterday uh, against Albania 5-0. What the final score? Obviously, I'm not interested because we did not have an Arsenal player score there. Hurricane, three goals. Um, Harry Maguire, another goal. And Jaden Henderson, one of those players that I think are really underrated in the Premier League, also scored another goal. And Smith Rowe in that game got some minutes, you know, got, got some minutes in. And finally, boy, oh boy, the boy has got his England, you know, England debut. And obviously, the fact that the Qatar World Cup. Uh, you know, is coming in, uh, you know, in November and December next year. Probably Emu Smith Rowe has a lot of time to bail himself out this season. If he does well, I've already told you, he, well, he is World Cup material. He can bring the, you know, the, you know, the World Cup uh, back in England. Of course, English fans, that's what you want. You know that you've taken a long time without winning it. You need it. Moving on, uh, guys, two strikers have been linked with Arsenal this early morning. And let's try to dive into that um, at the moment. Let's start off uh, with uh, Victor Osimhen. Now, Victor Osimhen at Napoli. 
Nigerian striker, isn't he? Really, really good. One of those players that are actually, uh, you know, have proven to be top class strikers in the past three years. Napoli signed him, you know, signed him from the French League One, and um, it was really, really expensive. Really expensive. He's the most expensive, according to what I know, he's the most expensive um, Af you know, African player in the world, on the continent, like in the universe. He's the most expensive um African player. According to the you know, information I have, Napoli could have paid between 60 to 90 million dollars to get the player. So that means if anyone, that, you know, if, if anyone wants to take the player away, it's going to really take a lot. We could pay 100 million. They could, you know, it could be 95. It could be 110 million. Look, I'm not really sure, but he's been linked with Arsenal yet again. We, you know, we were linked with him, uh, you know, right before he joined Napoli. We were in, you know, in that transfer race. But it looked like Arsenal by that time were not really serious, looking for a striker. At the moment, we are serious. We are very, very serious. We want a striker either in January or in the summer, Victor Osimhen, the gold machine at Napoli is being linked. Obviously, January, that one is a deal off. It is absolutely off. Napoli are still in the title race, uh, in the Italian Serie A. They are not looking to let, best, uh, to let go of one of their best players in that month. So look, it could be in the summer. It could be 100 million. Can Arsenal pay 100 million um, for uh, Victor Osimhen? I don't know. But what I know is a good striker. He knows where the net is but of course boy oh boy being linked with um you know a couple of players in italy makes me sick again dusan blahovic a swap deal has been proposed um you know and is on the cards arsenal uh are, are proposing a swap deal between dusan blahovic and lucas torreira now fiorentina have already made it clear they've said it should be 80 million euros to get the player in january I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna say i'm really 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 sorry his contract runs down in 2023 not in 2022 that gives fiorentina a little bit of an advantage but look a swap deal is up uh, look swap deals ask no, when have we ever done swap deals that are really successful okay let me think about one swap deals swap deals swap deals i don't remember one but look a swap deal could be, you know, uh, in, in this instant, it could make a lot of sense. One, um, you look at, um, you know, you look at Fiorentina and how they are really enjoying the services of Lucas Torreira, and they are very, very scared that the player does not want to sign a new contract. That is Victor Oshiman uh, with them. If he runs into the last year of his contract, it's going to be very cheap. It's going to be bargain. They don't want that to happen, and that's why they are trying to rush to sell this player. Now, I, I, I've had, a, I, I've got an insight from um, an Italian journalist from someone uh, who is really 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 interested and best in Italy and knows the Italian game and has actually disappointed me with his review of the player he said yes he's a young prospect one that you know one that is uh, uh really good to look out for one that you should be keeping an eye on but he's very inconsistent he said that it is easy to keep you know, to, to put him out of the game and with us you know, trying to build something um you know around players with great potential Blahovic could be one of those players but he doesn't accept that we should be paying eight million. And when I had that, I, I, you know, look for the look out, look forward for that interview. It is on the Chronicles of Eguna. I think big up to Harry Simeo. He's actually done a very good job, you know, by bringing in expert insights. Tom Canton also does it, and definitely I'll do it on this channel because look, I want to produce the best content because I'm the best content creator. It's, you know the world has ever seen so look guys victor osimen dozen blahovic who do we go for my opinion there is osimen is a very experienced player as compared to dozen blahovic blahovic has already had uh you know some good seasons one of uh, actually one season this season is already scored 10 goals but the expert inside that i got also said that the player also needs penalties to survive now look I do not want players that, um, you know, do survive on penalties as strikers, despite the fact that I want my strikers to take the penalties. Because, look, if your strikers take the penalties, they get, more, they get to challenge for the golden boot, they get to, you know, to, to boost their confidence, and more, and more, and more. But Dusan Blahovic, you know, a, a swap deal is being proposed uh, between Fiorentina and Arsenal. And, of course, the two players involved in the swap deal could be Dusan Blahovic and Lucas Torreira. Torreira is no longer welcome at Arsenal, especially under Mikel Arteta. He's very, 
very far away from what Mikel Arteta wants in a midfielder. And of course, Torreira and his father and the PR they are doing are very, very far away from what we need at the moment at Arsenal Football Club. So if you look at, you know, um, you know Torreira is very, very good in, a, you know, in, 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 um, you know, in, in, in the Italian Serie A. I think he understands the language. I feel, I think he feels at home. The Premier League, it didn't really work out. Yes, he was wanted by Unai Emery. And I think, he's, you know, he was one of his signings that were just swept under the carpet by Mikel Arteta. Look, that is not my problem. I didn't, you know, I didn't sign them. So if Mikel doesn't want them, then they should be moving on. So, look, talking about a swap deal, if Fiorentina can actually accept that, probably we give them some 40 million and, um, and Lucas Torreira because, look, how much are we going to get from Lucas Torreira? 20 million, 15 million, I don't know. So it could be an incentive. We could use it as, in, uh, as an incentive to entice uh, the deal. And of course, with this expert insight that I have at the moment, I'm really skeptical that we should be paying the 80 million now with a player whose contract is actually running down very, very soon. Probably 40, you know, 40 million, 45 million pounds should be the, uh, should be the price we are paying. But look, Experts insight, you know, expert insights are very, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 are very spot on. They could be right, they could be wrong. But what you know, uh, one thing I know is that they are very, very spot on. But again, to give Dusan Blahovic a benefit of a doubt, he's 21. Last season, literally 20, scored 21 goals. This season has continued his tally with or without penalties. 11 goals already, uh, you know, in 12 appear, you know, in, in 12 games. So look, he might be a little bit, con in, you know, inconsistent. But he's young, and that is what you know, that is what young players do. They are inconsistent, but when they get to, uh, you know, to mature, you know, to, to mature up, um, you know, and grow up, they could be very, very interesting. Now, moving on away, away from, um, uh, you know, Italian players and, and, and transfers and, and, you know, and things like that. Aubameyang actually scored on his, uh, on, 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 on his uh, international break. Wow. Of course, after missing Cetas, uh, again, uh, you know, against Watford. I was really disappointed, but of course, guess what? The boy came to, uh, you know, the, the, the land of milk. The, uh, the boy flew to Africa and scored for Gabon. Of course, congratulations to my captain, Pelemir Kabamian. Congratulations to you, Gabon. And congratulations to everyone uh, that loves Pelemir Kabamian. He did score um, on his international break. And of course, we've seen players like Thomas Partey do well for Ghana. And when they have come back at Arsenal, they've been absolutely late. So probably Abamian coming back, uh, you know, uh, from, from Ghana, from, from, from Gabon, uh, after scoring, it could actually help us, and we pray, and I pray that he actually scores more goals uh, during that international break. Of course, uh, to, just to give a mention, just from um, you know, for purposes of mention, uh, Tomiyasu also played 90 minutes uh, for uh, you know for Japan as they were uh, actually. I, I, I look, I don't remember even the club they were taking on, but he also played uh, 90 minutes. So that means three of our players did feature for their countries, um, at least Abameyang, Smith Rowe, and the man himself. Takiro to Miyasu. Of course, that is um, you know, that is that is not kind of uh, that is international break watch. So you know, should give me some credit because I'm actually doing very very well. But guys, getting into the most scary of news in this video, be, be you know, look, be sure to su to subscribe, to turn on the notification bell, and smash the like button because after this uh, after this uh, you know episode, you might not be able to do that. Now, Thomas Partey is the man I'm talking about. Yes, Arsenal did come out and give you know, uh, they gave us a very very interesting report uh, especially Mikel Arteta about the injury update on Thomas Partey and I quote he said he picked up a muscle injury it is something small let's see how it's gonna be doing we all hope that by two three days he's gonna be out of the sick bay he's gonna be fit he's gonna be flying with Ghana doing his thing and maybe coming back and destroying Liverpool in the midfield that is not the case at the moment look I'm not saying he's ruled out. I'm not saying that um, you know Ghana should, you know, will miss him. Ghana have been expecting a call from Arsenal uh, to see whether the player will actually be featuring for them, but it's not actually working out. Ghana are saying at the moment the player is still at London Colony. The player is still in London, trying to nurse his wounds, trying to nurse uh, you know his injury. And Arsenal are now beginning to feel like he is a doubt for the Liverpool game. Boy, oh boy, this is one of the things I don't want to hear about at the moment. Thomas Partey governs the midfield <laughs> Thomas Partey is the midfield beast is the midfield dynamite we can you know it's the only point of leverage we can have in that Liverpool game so if if he's out look it is absolutely absolutely really really absurd but of course look the injury that picked up at you know at, at first it was very very slight it was a small injury and Mikel came out and said look 
It's just a muscle injury. It's just a small groin injury. He's going to miss Watford and that's all. Maybe Ghana should do us a, you know, a, a service and they should do themselves a service because if Pate doesn't get back to, you know, you know, to fitness, if he doesn't get, you know, get back to, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to fitter ways, they might actually miss him in the World Cup. And look, Ghana, you don't want to do that. So my opinion, my thoughts on that is, look, two games i think it's around two games or three games that it's gonna be missing for ghana ghana you've got a couple of talent there I, I look i don't know i don't know many players that are you know uh, th that you've called up because i really do not follow you know uh, your national team but look Pate, let us give him the t this fortnight let us give him these 14 days probably he could miss up the liverpool game because i know Mikel Atita will never rush him for liverpool it's a game that we just need to show character it's a game that we need to show consistency uh, in character it's a game where we need to show um tenacity belief um and and, and 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 believe in the project it's not a game that we're coming you know in as bitter direct rivals for liverpool so look we, we are I, I doubt us the will uh, rush Thomas Partey back. I think Thomas Partey will not be rushed back if he's not ready. But Ghana or this kind of pressure they are putting on, they are you know they are piling up. You need him on Ma you need him by Monday. Uh, you know, look, you can do away with Thomas Partey. And I'm not, I'm really saying I'm not really saying uh, this as an as you know as, as a selfish Arsenal fan, but I'm really concerned with Thomas Partey's injury record at Arsenal ever since he joined. At um during his period at, at Atletico Madrid, he wasn't picking up these injuries. I don't know what's happening, right? We need to give him more time in the sick bay to nurse those wounds, uh, to nurse those muscles, so that he comes back as a unique better player talking about african players and talking about uh the liverpool arsenal game two players have, uh, have have now picked up injuries for liverpool that is salah and money now i've seen this story about salah i even don't know how deep it goes but look it's not it, it might not be very very big just like the you know the side your money uh knock he picked up but look liverpool cannot play without salah they cannot play without man yes they have a couple of other players in there uh, roberto Firmino as your false nine then you could have uh, probably robbie elliott i don't know if he's bad uh you could have chamberlain on, you know on one wing you could have also uh you know diogo jota on the other wing so look it's still a scary club side with or without Sadio Mane and Salah. But of course, we know what Salah brings on the table. They got in the Premier League at the moment. We know what Mane brings on the table. One of those best players you know, for Liverpool uh, for the past half a decade is one of those beasts in the Premier League that I've really, really, really seen and I'm scared of. He's destroyed Arsenal before. Salah's destroyed Arsenal before. And look, if they're out of this game, why? Why not? Boy, oh boy, I could be very, very happy. But of course, uh, the update is that Salah has also picked up a knock uh, during international, uh, during international, uh, you know, international duty. Same as you know, Saidi Mane, they'll be assessed to see if they'll be ready for the Arsenal game. If they're not ready for the Arsenal game, I'll say congratulations to Arsenal. Moving on, guys. Uh, Lacazette and Nicola Pepe. Two stories to discuss as we come closer to the end of our 20 minute, uh, 20 minute video. Alexander Lacazette linked to Manchester City. Look, Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, I understand. I know the love you have for each other. I know how much you give each other, uh, you know, respect. But Lacazette to Manchester City, that is. A, you know that is um you know a, a, you know a, a bomb a ticking time bomb you we, we can't do that sorry we can't do that yes we are not title challengers we are also definitely definitely uh, not directly opposed to manchester city's success this season because look i think their their dreams are to win the title and our little dreams are to go back to the champions league but if you give manchester city lacazette what have you done one you've given um you know one of our best players to our best you know, to, to one of our biggest rivals uh you know of, of all time because for me ever since they started taking the likes of samuel nasri they took adebayo i am disgusted i'm absolutely disgusted with manchester city i do not even want to give them a player on a free on, on a free deal look like i said we need him until the end of the season now manchester city of course we know that they do need a striker in january they've been struggling to you not know, to finish off their chances if you look at their conversion rate record this season you'll be shocked they're 12th in the league um in um in in in, in the uh, on the table of numbers of, of 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 teams that have failed to convert their chances that has never happened ever before under Pep Guardiola. They've always been uh, between first and third in converting their chances. Of course, the reason is very clear. They've had the likes of Aguero before. They've had um, 
uh, you know, a very, very prolific striker uh, in him. And now that they do not have a prolific striker, I don't know, Pep Guardiola is playing uh, Gabriel Jesus on the wings. Of course, it's not the best finishers, trust me. Uh, even if he doesn't play, Manchester City would not feel any effect. So they want Alexander Lacazette to fill in the gap so that they can actually win the title. Should we give them the title? Should we give them Alexander Lacazette? Because for me, I feel like if you give them a striker, you've given them the title. No, City spend the money. If you have the money, you said they have the money. You said they have the Arab money. You said they have the oil money. Go out there, get, you know, you, you could get Alan Haaland for 170 million. Look, he's known for sale at least not in January. And finally, reports are saying that Nicola Pepe is closer and closer and closer to an Arsenal exit. And I said this yesterday, um, you know, on, during the transfer live show. And I said, look, yes, we might be very nostalgic about Nicola Pepe and how we signed him and things like that. He's, um, you know, a record, tra you know, a, a record holder in terms of, uh, you know, Arsenal transfers. I do not care. Being linked with Starling, Noah Lang, uh, Dijan Klesavisky, it only shows you that more and more pressure is on Nicola Pepe and high chances are that he will leave the club. My name is Kosi. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'll speak to you at 4.45 and at 9 p.m. today live where I get your match reactions. Where, sorry, where I get your reactions, where I get much of your involvement, engagement, and obviously we talk to each other.